just labor is not going to get you somewhere. Right kind of action, the right timing, right place, all this is important, isn't it? The events around you may not be determined by you, but how your experience of life is on this planet is one hundred percent determined by you. Believe me, you're not going to be here forever. I'll bless you with a long life, but you're going to fall dead one day. If you're beginning to think that what you're doing is very important, you need to take a holiday. You cannot fight or you cannot overcome that which does not exist. We have fixed too many things on the outside. If you fix any more, there won't be a planet left. He's an Indian yogi, mystic, philanthropist and author. He founded a non-profit organization which offers yoga programs around the world. He also founded Project Green Hand, a grassroots ecological initiative in India. He's Sadhguru and here's my take on his top 10 rules for success. My personal favorite clip is number 7, so I'm curious to figure out which one you guys like the best. Effort has to be incisive in the sense it should be focused, calibrated. Simply if you make effort, it's foolish effort, isn't it? Just labor is not going to get you somewhere. Right kind of action, the right timing, right place, all this is important, isn't it? So, for all these things to happen, you need perception and intelligence. So that's all you must do in your life, constantly looking for ways to enhance your perception and your intelligence. Rest will anyway happen. This is one thing that unfortunately humanity is not doing. They're trying to become capable of something. Do not try to become capable of something. Just enhance your perception and intelligence. Can you see me right now, all of you? Can you see me? Just point out where I am. Use your hands and point out. Can you see me? Oh, you got it wrong. You know I'm a mystic. <laughs> You're getting it completely wrong. Now, this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in your retina. You know the whole story, right? Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself, where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself, have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Everything that ever happened to you, darkness and light happened within you, pain and pleasure happened within you, joy and misery happened within you, have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? No. So what I am asking you is, what happens within you, who should determine how it should happen? Hmm? What happens within you, who should determine how this should happen? Somebody else? Definitely you should determine what should happen within this, isn't it? So if you determine what's happening within this, your whole experience of life will be determined by you, nobody else but you, isn't it? The events around you may not be determined by you, but how your experience of life is on this planet is one hundred percent determined by you if you take charge of this. If you leave it loose, just about anybody will determine it. They will, not consciously, they also like you by accident. If you… if you just observe, if everybody makes a little effort, everybody take a little time for this piece of life, okay? Not for your family, not for your career, not for something else, something else. Just for this piece of life, give it little time because this is the most important piece of life in your life, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. Even if you're in love with somebody, still this is the most important piece of life, isn't it? So pay some attention to this, how does it happen? Why have you taken it for granted? Believe me, you're not going to be here forever. I'll bless you with a long life, but you're going to fall dead one day. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. So, do not take this for granted. If you wake up in the morning, tomorrow if you wake up in the morning, 
<laughs> no, this is not my wish, but I want you to know of all the people who go to bed tonight, over a million people will not wake up tomorrow morning. And tomorrow, if you and me wake up tomorrow morning, is it not a fantastic thing? A million people did not wake up, you woke up. Is it not a great thing? Just look at the ceiling and smile, you are still awake, <laughs> you're still there. And for many, many millions of people, somebody who is dear to them did not wake up. So just check those five, six people around you. They all woke up, wow, it's a fantastic day. <laughs> you woke up and everybody who matters to you around you woke up. Is it not fantastic day? Yes. You don't think so. Yes. <laughs> yes. You don't seem to think so. Yes. Because the problem is just this, you are living with an idea that you are immortal. When I say you are immortal, you are not actually thinking you are immortal, but you are not conscious of your mortality. If you are not conscious of your mortality, somewhere you think you are immortal, isn't it? How many moments in a day are you conscious that you are mortal? If you were conscious, would you have time to crib? Would you have time to fight with somebody? Would you have time to do some rubbish with your life? If you knew, if you are conscious that you are mortal, you would do nothing other than what is absolutely needed for you and everybody around you. This one thing if you do, if you just remind yourself, you don't think this is a negative thing, death is not a negative thing, it's the only thing which is added value to your life. If you're here forever, you would be unbearable. <laughs> yes, yes. Isn't it? Aren't yes. we glad everybody dies one day? <laughs> if you just become conscious of this one thing, that always you're conscious that I'm mortal, you don't have to think I will die today, we don't intend, we want to live as far as possible, just you know one day I will die. If you're just conscious of this one thing, you will naturally become spiritual. Every day, every moment if you remind yourself, this is a brief life, I'm mortal, one day I will end. Just do this for two days and see, you will become something truly fantastic within yourself, just this is all. <laughs> that is simply beautiful. That's all that's needed. If you want to know the value of life, just know that it's a brief happening. Just loosen up your life a little bit, laugh a little more, involve yourself with people around you. Do things that you think is not so important. Don't do things which are very important. Do simple things. It's very important you do simple things. Very important things you're doing in your life, you will become dead serious. You know, Burton Russell, an Englishman, Burton Russell said, if you're beginning to think that what you're doing is very important, you need to take a holiday. So holiday does not mean coming to India. Holiday is every day in those twenty-four hours you must take a holiday from your seriousness, from yourself. Seriousness has come essentially because of your self-importance. You hold yourself as an important person. I want you to see you are like a speck of dust in this existence. Tomorrow morning if you disappear, for sure in India nobody will miss you. Even down under, they won't bother much, you know. A handful of people, they will also forget soon enough. Isn't it so? Oof! Nature does oof, you're gone. And nothing will happen in this world, everything will happen wonderfully well even if you're not there. Every human being should be aware of this every moment of his life. It does not matter what the whole world says about you. It does not matter how significant a work you're doing. You must understand that tomorrow morning the world will go on fine without you, whoever you may be. Isn't it so? If you constantly remind yourself of this, you'll have no reason to be serious. <laughs> Definitely not dead. And don't be dead now, a time will come. It's time to be alive. <laughs> to create fear, 
you have to use excessive imagination to not be in fear. You don't have to do anything. Fear is happening because of excessive imagination, things that have not happened, you're creating. What may happen in your mind happens in thousand different formats and most probably it never happens. The things that you feared, take hundred things that you have feared, probably ninety-nine of them never happened, isn't it? Yes. So your fear, your fear is always about that which does not exist. You cannot fight or you cannot overcome that which does not exist. We can overcome something that exists. You cannot overcome that which does not exist. You just have to give up that effort. Enjoy the fear. After all, it's your making. You like horror movies. Yes, uh, I mean, you're saying no, but you're, you're producing them. It's just they're not making money, that's all. <laughs> fear means you're producing horror movies in your mind. Nobody else is willing to watch. That's bad for the producer. But you're producing them. So, you produce something else. Produce a comedy, a love story, suspense, thriller. Try and see today. Just sit down, produce a love story, a suspense thriller, a comedy. Five, five minutes mo movies you make in your mind, really. Start using your mind differently. It's just gotten into your pattern. Just gotten into your pattern of just creating horror movies all the time. You have watched enough horror movies, they're boring. Create something else. <laughs> Even it's not that if you produce these movies, those things will happen in your life. Still they may not happen, at least you enjoy the movie. <laughs> in reality it may not happen, so what? At least you enjoy what's happening in your mind, if you cannot enjoy what's happening in the world, isn't it? That much privilege every human being deserves, isn't it so? Even if the world is not kind to him, at least his own mind should be kind to him, should produce some nice movies. <laughs> we are completely committed to one dimension of our intelligence which we call as the intellect, which is just the thought process. Thought can only happen with the data that you have gathered through five senses, which is very limited, one thing. Another thing is, the nature of data that the senses gather are only useful for survival process. The very nature of how you see things, how you hear, smell and taste and touch life is only relevant for survival process. If you wanting to know the life itself, then these instruments of perception are no good. Even what is light and darkness is a debate between you and another creature which sees darkness as light, isn't it? If you sit with an owl, uh, an owl and start an argument as to which is light and which is darkness, it's an endless argument, but who do you think is right? Hello? Uh, if you're saying both, you are either in the diplomatic core <laughs> or, or you have a successful marriage <laughs> 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 You have learned to say both, both, but which is the truth? What I see is the truth or what the owl sees is the truth? That's not the point, it is just that nature has opened up our sense perception as it is necessary for our survival. Accordingly, it has opened up sense perceptions for different creatures as it is necessary for their survival. But if survival is all you're seeking, this is good enough, the five senses. But once you have come as a human being, somehow survival is not good enough. If your stomach is empty, there's only one issue about food. But once the stomach becomes full, you have a hundred issues going on. <laughs> so the nature of the human being is such, no matter what you do, you want to be something more than what you are right now. 
And if that something more ha happens, something more, something more, it's an endless pursuit. So somewhere a human being is seeking a limitless expansion, but trying to do it with physical means. The very nature of physicality is a defined boundary. If there is no defined boundary, there is no possibility of physical happening in the universe. But now, a human being is longing for the boundless, that too in installments <laughs> and through physical means. Through the boundary, you're trying to become boundless. The desire is fantastic, the method is hopeless. <laughs> because the moment you identify yourself with something, your intellect's work is just to protect that identity. If you… whatever the identities of nation or family or gender or race, religion, whatever, the moment you identify yourself with something, your intellect will only function around that to protect that. So, it is a certain type of prejudice the moment you're identified. So, the only thing I did with my life is I never identified myself with anything and life just exploded within me in ways that thought seems so puny that I do not indulge in thought most of the time. Pleasantness is the choice, isn't it? So why is it so much unpleasantness is happening in human experience? Because we never took charge of the inner dimension. We believe by fixing the outside everything is going to be okay. In the last hundred, hundred and fifty years, with the advent of science and modern technology, we have fixed too many things on the outside. If you fix any more, there won't be a planet left. Yes? Definitely this has brought much convenience and comfort to our lives. In every way, we are the most comfortable generation ever. You, you agree with me? I know you have series of complaints about how things are not okay, but we are the most comfortable generation ever before on this planet, isn't it so? But we cannot say we are the most joyful generation on the planet, we are the most loving generation on the planet, we are the most blissed out generation on the planet, definitely not. We are complaining, complaining like crazy about everything, like never before. <laughs> this is because we fixed the outside, comfort and convenience has happened. Well-being has not happened. If your interiority was handled by you consciously, you would definitely keep this in a blissful state. So is bliss the goal of life? No. Bliss is a necessary condition for life to flower to its full potential, otherwise it will remain constrained. You're paying too much attention to everything around you, not enough attention to this one but the quality of your life is essentially determined by how you carry this one. Yes or no? This moment, what kind of clothes you're wearing, what kind of car you parked outside, what kind of home you live in does not determine the quality of your life. This moment, how joyful are you feeling within yourself determines the quality of your life, isn't it so? Nothing has been done about it. You think it'll happen in consequence and you're setting impossible goals for your happiness. If I have to be happy, my wife should be like this, my hus husband should be like that, my children should be like this, the world should become some other way. Well, these are impossible conditions you're setting for your happiness and peacefulness. Now that you have compromised yourself to peace, why I'm saying compromise yourself to peace is because a lot of people have given up aspirations for being ecstatic, or blissful, if I'm just peaceful, it's enough. Even the so-called spiritual leaders are going about and saying, peace is the highest goal in your life. Peace is not the highest goal in your life. If you want to enjoy your lunch today, you must be peaceful, yes or no? <laughs> if you're not even peaceful, there is nothing in your life that you can do in a worthwhile way. To be peaceful essentially means this, that you're not messing your mind. To be peaceful means that your system is at ease. You know how to conduct your mind, you know how to conduct your emotions, your body and your energies, you are peaceful. It is not a rocket technology. 
It is the most basic thing. You have a dog at home, you give him his food, he sits peacefully. Maybe not ecstatic, but peacefully. Many times they're ecstatic also. <laughs> yes? If your dog is able to sit peacefully, oh, he doesn't have to run my industry. That's not the point, he's got his own stuff going. <laughs> See, it has nothing to do with the external activity that you're doing. It's got something to do with the internal systems as to how they're functioning. Essentially, it means either neither your body nor your mind nor your chemistry nor your emotions nor your energy are taking instructions from you. They're doing their own thing. Once your machine is not in your control, being peaceful is impossible. I'll tell you, you get into your car and now you go there and you want to turn this way. You do this to the steering, it goes this way. Can you peacefully drive this car? Can you? No. Anxiety is natural, isn't it? This is what has happened to your vehicle. It's out of control. You've never done anything to find out where the steering wheel is, first of all. This is not that simple as a car, this is a super, super computer. Now the problem is most people have not even bothered to find the keyboard. They think if they do this, somehow it'll work. <laughs> if you make… when you're given such a highly sophisticated machine, if you do not conduct it properly, it will cause many problems to you. By accident it's working. I want you to know this, this is made this way. If you hold your hands like this, it'll breathe one way. If you just turn it around, the very way you breathe, the breathing pattern itself changes in your lungs. You can try it if you want when you have the time. This way, this way. I'm saying everything that you do, fundamental changes are happening in this machine because it's such a sophisticated machine. It's more than a touch screen, if you just wish it, it will happen. When you have such a sensitive and sophisticated machine and you are operating like a blacksmith, <laughs> then being peaceful seems to be difficult. Peace is not the highest goal in your life, it is the most fundamental requirement. Don't ever set peace as the highest goal. If you do that, you will only rest in peace <laughs> You must see, to be peaceful is the first thing in your life, isn't it? If you want to do anything sensibly in your life, if you want to do… conduct any situation in your life sensibly, to be peaceful and happy is fundamental. Unfortunately, in many ways, not just in the way that I said now, in many different ways, I would say seventy percent of illnesses on the planet, all kinds, are self-created. Even if you get an infection, there is a way. If you keep yourself in a certain way physically and mentally, the virus and the bacteria will not work the same way as it works upon somebody else. If you set yourself like this, no matter what's happening, anyway, I have to go and do this, this and this. There's no break from that. The last twenty-nine years, I have not been able to cancel one program because I'm running temperature, I got a cold, I got this, I got that. It doesn't matter what's happening, what you have to do, you anyway have to do. You can't turn back on that. Either out of your commitment or you have a boss like that. One or one way or the other, if it happens, then you will see, you will not at all fall sick so often. Because if you have temperature, you still have to go. If it's summer, you still go, right? No, a lot of people don't go. It's a little hot outside, they don't go and work. <laughs> little cold outside, they don't go and work. A little raining, they won't go and work. A snowflake, they will not go and work. This is just weather. So for every change in weather, if you have the comfort of covering yourself in a blanket and lying down, once you create that, your body will learn to fall sick as often as possible. If you just keep it this way, it doesn't matter what it is, anyway I have to go and do what I have to do, you will see your body will just bounce back as quickly as possible.
even if it gets the worst kind of infections. So you just have to set the necessary conditions for health, necessary in incentives for health, both for yourself and your children if you have them. Do not set incentives for sickness. I was speaking in Nashville a few years ago. I was just telling them a joke. In the joke, I referred to God as him. Immediately a few ladies stood up, said, do you believe God is a man? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know where it's going, I was only telling you a joke. It doesn't matter, you said him, do you believe God is a man? I said, I was only telling you a joke. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so now there is an argument going around in certain parts of America, is God a man or a woman? In India we have no such problems. We have a man god, we have a woman god, we have a cow god, we have an elephant god, we have a monkey, we have a snake, we have flying ones, crawling ones, creeping ones, every kind. <laughs> because uh, it's a very wise culture, we foresaw all the future problems that may arise. <laughs> you know? If you want another amazing video highlighting excellence in the Indian community, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.